Hi, Jim Castama here from Olympia on the first week of the special session. In fact, today's Friday, the last day of the first week of the special session. You may remember that the governor asked the legislature to convene on November the 28th and then spend the month of December to trying to address a $1.4 billion shortfall in the budget. You may have also heard that this has been a very eventful week. There have been thousands of people who have protested, hundreds of people who have testified in hearings about the impact that these cuts will have on them. Now, the irony in all of this is, is that with the state of our budget, and even if we do pass more taxes in Olympia, next year, those same people will have to come back to Olympia and talk about the same kind of cuts we're going to give in the budget at that time. The fact of the matter is, the budget is unsustainable. Even if we do pass more taxes or make the kind of cuts this year, the long-term projection on our state budget basically has to be dealt with or else we'll be in deficits every single year for the next five years. Let me go ahead and explain in detail. What I have here is a chart and it shows on the left hand side in billions what our state budget is. And then on the bottom side you'll see the fiscal years. Well you can see from the first line there, the first dot, that that's where our current revenues are. They're at 15 billion dollars per year. So let's see where our expenses are at. Our expenses are at 16 billion dollars per year. So that's why we have a billion dollar shortfall every year and that's why we're, that's how much we're looking at adding. We need to make up for a billion a year. So let's see where the revenues go into the future, okay? Over the next five years, we expect revenues will increase at a 4.5% rate every single year and we'll end up with about $18.7 billion by 2017. But wait, let's see where our expenses go. Our expenses go to almost $22 billion. That means by 2017, we'll be short $3.3 billion per year. Now, you know we do our budget cycles every two years, so that means our budget will be $6.6 .6 billion short. That will make this year's budget crisis look mild compared to what we faced then. So let's say we increase taxes a billion dollars. The voters vote for it or we vote for it here. How will that help us out? You can see that helps some, but we're still $2.2 billion short every year in 2017. So how do we bridge this gap? How do we make sure that our budget, in fact, is sustainable? Here's a couple of ideas. First of all, we could be really straight with voters and we could tell them that we can't fund items that we've been promising them for years. For example, Initiative 728 and Initiative 732. These two were passed by the voters and they dealt with class size and cost of living adjustments for teachers. However, the legislature doesn't fund those items. In addition, in 2009, we passed monumental education reform, but we never funded it. If you took these obligations off of our budget, you would bring our budget down, and even at that point, we would be $1.1 billion short. Another idea, if you deal with the health care in our budget, that also can bring our expenditures in line with revenue. Healthcare expenditures are growing at a rate twice that of our revenue growth rate. And remember, our revenue growth rate is at 4.5% per year. If you just put in place reforms on healthcare, you could bring that expenditure line closer to our revenue line. Finally, if you adopted management practices that are common in the private sector, you may have heard of them before, Lean Six Sigma. If you adopted these in government, as you've adopted them in the private sector, it's very reasonable and in fact it's fairly conservative to say you would save 10 percent of your overall costs. So here are just a few ideas on how we can align our expenditures with our revenues. Now in part four I'll go into greater detail about these and the plan to make sure we have a sustainable budget going forward. But let me tell you why this is so important. It's important because if we're going to ask voters to vote for more taxes. We have to be able to tell them that we have our house in order. We have to show them and demonstrate to them that we have a sustainable budget. 
and then in the future, we won't have people coming forward year after year after year testifying against the draconian cuts that we'll have to make in government and the impact that that will have on their lives. We deserve more here in Washington State, and I look forward to sharing those with you in part four. Again, thanks.